now they got another guy running. Wesley Clark is going to run for president, the four star general. Admit it, Democrats, you need Hillary to run. Stop all this other nonsense. Nobody's heard of this guy. You got Democrats running generals, Republicans running Hollywood people. Both of you keep to your own parties. Did you see the other candidates for the Democratic debate? Did you see them kissing Sharpton's ass because it was held at the Black Caucus? They're like, amen, Reverend. Oh, you got that right, Reverend. <laughs> but they were also trying to get in with him because he was the only one that was alive. He's the only one that has a personality. I hate him, and I still like him the best that night. <laughs> Every time one of the white guys started speaking, I wanted to yell, wake up! Yeah, John Edwards. Is his haircut and bland look supposed to be reassuring? <laughs> you know. Why do you get a mustache or a turtleneck? Anything. I don't know. You got a tattoo on his neck? Anything. All right. Then you got poor Joe Lieberman. Yeah, nobody in his crew has the nerve to tell him it's over. <laughs> um, it's like, Joe, oh, yeah, right. You're the vice. We remember. Get it um, How about Howard Dean? I'm the only white candidate that speaks about race. You're from Vermont. You must be getting a real bird's eye view of the racial static in this country from the pottery shops and the ski lifts, you loudmouth. And guess what? You made a bad chess move politically when you tried to knock heads with the children of Abraham, you little bowling ball of a man. You better get on the bus with the Israelis and hope the guy you're sitting next to doesn't have a shirt that's smoking. Now look. All right, look at John Kerry. This is the one that actually disappointed me. How could you be a Vietnam vet hero and be boring? You gotta work it. You gotta walk up there, and you gotta be like, Al Sharpton, you remind me of a brother I knew from my first tour of duty from Cleveland. Good kid. <laughs> then you gotta, when all the other Democrats let everybody speak, and then near like five minutes near the end, you're like, I think you people know my stance. I think I've proven while these gentlemen are doing whatever they were doing, I was crawling through the tunnels of the make. I'm sure these guys are, you know my stance. Here's my stance, folks. This is my stance. <laughs> You know, take, first of all, take a look at this clip. My name is Wes Clark. <laughs> Who cares? I am from Little Rock, Arkansas. Shut up. <laughs> and I'm here to announce that I intend to seek the presidency of the United States of America. So what? <laughs> now, folks, first of all, I might vote for because somebody gave me this clock button with a clock bar attached to it last week. It's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, well, it's kind of cool. You know what a hassle I was going to go to the clock company. Look, we got a guy running for office. We don't know if he's running yet. Blah, 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 blah. And then, like, hey, why don't we give a damn? Nobody buys clock bars anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I thought these were for, like, when I was a kid. Jake, what do you think? Well, Not about the clock bar, about this thing. Right. I, this, I, yeah. I think I understand the question. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, he's, a, he's a Rhodes Scholar and first in his class at West Point. So I feel like he's too smart to be president. I mean, we've already got the guy in there now, the threat matrix they've had to convert to comic book form. And uh, I am like you, I'm voting for Al Sharpton because I've had it with all of them. And I feel like just send Al Sharpton up there and just like, you deal with this guy for four years and we'll see how I vote next time. Well, now, wait a minute. I did not say I'm voting for Al Sharpton, Jake. That's what you told me. <laughs> yes, you did. You said Shut up. Him. I said I liked him the best, personality wise. My problem was- I died, was that? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, that <laughs> Uh, yeah. Too bad his name isn't Wesley Snickers. That's my preference. <laughs> but um, my <laughs> uh, product placement. <laughs> my um. Don't try to be Hollywood inside stupid by saying product placement. That was very funny. Shut up. The joke was good, and then you try to say, "Hey, crowd, I know the terminology." I thought it was very funny. Shut your mouth. All right, you're, you're right. I, I apologize. <laughs> I did take it too far. It's okay. You didn't take Please, it too far. Say what you were saying. Did Tom Berenger called. He'd like his two payback. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. He doesn't wear a toupee. Thank you, know, Lynn. But you thought I did. She doesn't wear a toupee. She's looking at me. No, I'm look, I thought maybe Why did you pay? I have more hair over here on the toupee. Would you let pajama shirt get his point out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> please. Will you please leave uh, Auschwitz shirt alone and let him finish his point? Ouch. Go on. Hurt me. I'm an easy target. <laughs> <laughs> You certainly what are. What was your point? Uh, I wanted to say that Wesley, I, I actually like him because I, I saw some of the speech and he was saying that uh, he wants to run a campaign that's going to uh, move the country forward and not back. 
And it's that type of tough, innovative talk that makes him such a refreshing candidate. <laughs> yeah. um, I think he's also against crime and for education. This guy. <laughs> boy, this guy's a maverick. Even, 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 as, even his speech, he's really, he's really a great public speaker. He said, my name is Wes Clark. As if, like, people have been saying, no, it's not. <laughs> my name yeah, is you're right. Wes Clark. He accepted the wrong part. I think Sharpton is, uh, uh, the problem with Sharpton, I think Sharpton is the most exciting candidate in a lot of ways, but, but there's problems with him ultimately winning a presidential election because he showed in the Tawana Don't Brawl. Don't use the N-word. Because he's black. <laughs> well, no, not because he's black, because he showed... because he's black. He showed during the Tawana Brawley affair that he's willing to lie to inflame racial tensions and to... You uh, can't be the that, president if you're not willing to lie. Right? But not about <laughs> race. Wait, Jake. <laughs> Hold on. What were you going to say now? Something about that except funny. Thank I'm you, Jake. sorry. <laughs> Let me explain to you. First of all, you don't ever attack John Holmes' 1978 shirt and hair. No, but the, the reason, pe obviously, people are excited about Wesley Clark is because none of the other guys have a remote chance of winning. They're all flawed in huge ways. You have Lieberman, who's uh, Jewish, and... Uh, <laughs> well, well, no, but look, the reality... Hey, look, the reality is the country's still a very racist and bigoted place, and he's not... He's got... If I, I mean, if he at least was willing to come out and say, look, I will no longer drink the blood of Christian babies... Uh, <laughs> There, there'd be a chance. I don't there'd believe that people would not well, vote for a, chance, a Jew because he's a Jew. I don't buy it. Really? You don't, Mr. Utopian Dope? Of course they're not going to vote for a Jew. It's an awful country we live in. They're not going to vote for a Jewish president, Jewish vice president. You're maybe. an awful man, but there's not an awful No, country. I'm not saying it's right. I like Lieberman. Shut up. So. Just saying it's an awful country doesn't make you intelligent. No, but I, I'm not saying that. I like, I'm very conservative, but I think that we're not, the country's not going to vote for a black uh, president or a black vice president. Uh, it's got to be a vice president or a Jewish president. It's going to be a Jewish vice president. What about a woman? What about Hillary? What about a woman? Vice president. Oh, she's terrific, Hillary. Don't get me wrong. What energy she has. I mean, no, I really like her. Oh, she's yeah, spectacular. She's she spectacular. Does. Wait. It's amazing how people look at Hillary Clinton as this amazingly strong woman because she stayed with Bill Clinton. She stayed married to a guy who did nothing but stick it in fat chicks. When does that become... <laughs> really? When does that become a show of strength as a woman? To me, that's kind of pathetic to stay yeah. with a guy and who, who's doing nothing but cheating on you, and you're like, okay, he's a good husband, I love him. That's well, weird. Well, you have to stupid. walk out in the middle of the White House. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you you yeah, why not, Hillary supporter? Why not? Why can't you walk out in the middle of the White House? I'm a Sharpton supporter or Hillary supporter today. Hey, Rudy's <laughs> wife left. Rudy's wife left when he was caught uh, doing what he was doing with his dysfunctional unit. That's why he's not running for president. <laughs> you call oh. having cancer a dysfunctional unit? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always figured. Well, I always figured that Hillary was just staying there because she needed to stay in the White House because she was herself running for office. I always thought she was a lesbian. Really? Yeah, I figured... And you're supporting her by saying this right up. now? No, I don't think that's bad. <laughs> oh. So What's you're saying, so you're, wait a second. People so vote you're, for you're a woman and a dyke in the same election? Look, I, I started to well, say I'm not really thinks smart. She's going to throw <laughs> Clinton's suitcase out the window. But, she's, but now she's, so, 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 so you're accusing, you're accusing, accusing Hillary, you're accusing Hillary Clinton, Clinton, you're accusing Hillary Clinton of being responsible for the attacks on the World Trade Center? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get that. Well, she said she was a lesbian. we got to wrap it up. Look, I know our relationship is all about you, but please don't leave me alone with these people. Folks, Hans Blix, the weapons inspector, says that Iraq got rid of their weapons of mass destruction in 1991, okay? Now, first of all, if this Nazi knew that 10 years ago, why didn't he say so? Okay? I'll tell you what happened. They got to him. Saddam has pictures of him doing something that he doesn't want revealed. That's how it goes over there. Mark my words. And I don't think Sweden should be dealing with weapons. They don't even have weapons. Why do they have weapons inspectors? You want weapons inspectors? You go to the airport security ladies in our country, a couple of those mean sisters with the big nails. You gotta take off your shoes, sir. Open that factory, sir. No, it's closed. Tuck reach it. I'm not playing. Open that factory, sir. <laughs> you think I'm playing? You say something, open the door. They'll get some results, folks. Now, Greg, I'm gonna walk over here, but what do you think, Greg? <laughs> uh, uh, nice staging. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, Greg. I think, uh, I, I think, uh, well, first of all, I supported the war reluctantly because I've always thought we should be more interventionists, not less, when it comes to dictators and human rights abuses. But, but I think that this administration, the least they can do at this point is plant something because, uh, you know, I'm getting tired of losing arguments to people that, that were against the war in the first place. Uh, because, well, they did, that's how they did draw us into it, was the whole, there's weapons, and Saddam yeah. started to, the World Trade Center attacks, and none of that seems that is, is true now. None of it, even if it's none of that's true, don't you think that, isn't it kind of strange to live in a whole world, including in this country, 
where people like ignore whatever Saddam torture, murder, rapes right. for 20 years, and they take such relish in catching us in a little lie. Well, I'm talking about that's the lie that we used to go over there. If we'd have said, look, this guy has it does, numbers right, up, saying we people take his focus ass. on that. They're like, Saddam, well, we don't know. But well, tell we me, don't lie. Tell me his numbers up, and we got to go kick his ass, and then I'm on. Oh, I haven't said nobody would have gone for that. Excuse my language. Please. I would have gone I for that. I get crazy. Let me tell you something. That, that, <laughs> that, that Hans Blix is such a stick in the mud. Ooh. It's like you know, <laughs> enough with the weapons of mass destruction. It's water under the bridge. He said that Saddam Hussein might have been <laughs> posturing. He's turning into like an 80-year-old man. But no, it's water true. Under the bridge. He said Saddam Hussein was probably posturing. He did say that uh, just to uh, avoid an invasion, acting like he had them. And it's like, well, it worked. We thought he had them. Don't blame us that he's a great actor. Yeah, I mean... Shut up, third rape victim on Oz. Now, look, go ahead. <laughs> um, folks, let me tell you something. There's a battle right now. Talk about a waste of... Uh, oh, the House of Reps cafeteria and dining halls over whether Freedom Fries should go back to being French fries. This is what's wrong with our whole, <laughs> our whole country. Committees. Everything's a committee of proposal, meetings, legislature. Well, how about you walk in and just go, yeah, that was stupid. Take down the sign. Well, what should we call them? Should we tell people they're French? No, everybody knows what French fries look like, stupid. <laughs> but it always has to be this big thing. These representatives, do they understand? How could they make it? Don't you understand this is the whole problem of the entire world, is that this kind of nonsense becomes legislation, then they have to take it down? But I'll just decide after what just happened thanks, in France mess. with the heat wave. <laughs> I know you did that to feel sorry for me, but thanks anyway. I, I, think, I, think the, I think the problem in the world is that you, you, you stepped on the joke by showing the fries 15 minutes ago. <laughs> I don't think that's what happened. I think that was a subconscious uh, setup. I, th I don't know. Oh, how, how good did he... No, thank you. Nice spit on me. No, thank How good did he feel so insulting me while I'm standing there handing him food? <laughs> the, the guy, uh, the Repu I can't remember his name, Nay or Hay or Che or uh, Bay or something. He, the guy that's, that's advocating all this stuff, he said they were, they were arrogant and uncooperative before, and they still are. Like, even our Freedom Fries tactic hasn't brought them around. <laughs> and people get, people like, they, we don't know Freedom Fries, no Freedom Toast. Let's, you know, what's the next step? We gotta, we gotta amp it up. Let's just, let's stop using all French words. Instead, like, fiance, we'll just say personal and eventually suck the will to live right out of me. <laughs> I think Norton should go back to stupid, take your 140,000 million and leave, dummy. Go ahead. <laughs> Oof. Well, I think this whole thing is, it, we're, <laughs> we're basically, we're trying to suck up to the French, like you said, by changing the name back, because we want their help now. We, we don't we, need their help. Yeah, we do. We, no, yeah, we do. We did it all. We, we said, screw you, we don't need your help. We're going to go over there to Iraq and straighten everything out. Yeah. Now they're still fighting us. Our guys are getting killed. We're blowing billions of dollars. We want France to pony up some money and send some beret-wearing soldiers down there. Now let them do you get think the French for a while. even care, though? Like, do you think they're sitting around going, ugh, ugh, they're Because potatoes are from uh, Idaho. They're not even from France. It's ridiculous. They're it's from Belgium. French wine. Fr fr French fries are from Belgium. Well, I mean, Belgium. potatoes. It's not like French wine. Where you, what are you doing, Tom? You know what I mean? It's Idaho. Now, listen, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> First of all, get that look off your mug. Why, that was a great point you made about where potatoes are from. I'm sure everybody's fascinated by that. <laughs> and actually, and they're also from Maine, too, Colin. So, you oh. know, just be, uh, you got to be precise. I tried to slide into his subject, and he caught me. All right, you wanted to talk <laughs> about what's this Grand Theft Auto? Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're actually, uh... I'd love to smash these in your head right now. <laughs> actually, uh, Do it. Oh. Oh. But, uh, good, stupid. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Go ahead. Help Keep talking. Us. All right. Well, I you have to wait for me to be finished it, it, before you continue. Yeah, no. you're scalding yourself and distracting everyone. How no, am I supposed to get to my... <laughs> Go! I know, you banged your back Don't the worry table. about me, stupid, just talk. It's not my fault. There's a bunch of uh, people suing, or a couple of people actually suing Grand Theft Auto. The makers of Grand Theft Auto because a couple of uh, teenagers reenacted what they saw in the game, right. and went out and shot people, and now their families are suing Grand Theft Auto. And this has nothing to do with bad parenting. I mean, it uh, could happen to any of us, because I remember when I was a teenager, I was arrested for painting my face yellow and running around yelling, waka waka, after playing Pac-Man. <laughs> Shh, nobody say anything. <laughs> please, audience, please. It got, it got a little chuckle, please. and that will look much Shh. better when it's finally Audience, edited. please, let's give him an honest appraisal. <laughs> All right, I'll did accept that. Did you just say, uh... No, nope, I said it. Did you say you paint your face yellow and you walk a walk like the pac -Man? <laughs> I did say that, yes. You don't think that was kind of an insult to every comedy fan that took the time to come down during Hurricane Isabel to this show, stupid? <laughs> That joke stunk. You're right, it did stink. I apologize to the audience. And to you at home, this will probably never make the air, but if it does, I'm sorry. That joke was awful. <laughs> I mean, granted, I'm not smooth enough to shove food to my fat face and bang my groin on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, That's a good life point. is pain, life is suffering. Commercials are quick. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.
Rob, we're in the midst of what they call a jobless recovery. And the IT industry has been hit particularly hard. By the end of 2004, it's estimated that one out of every 10 American tech jobs will move to Southeast Asia. Companies like Bank of America are saving millions by replacing American programmers with low-paid Indian ones. I've decided to look into these geek sweatshops and see if there's anything we can do. Please welcome my guest and Bank of America's newest hire from Bangalore, Bindar Gandhi. Hello, Bindar. How's the new job? Hello, Mr. Quinn. It puts food on the table. Well, you can't ask more than that, I guess. What's with the mafia informant lighting? Are you in hiding or something? Uh, unfortunately, we have lost electricity. Oh, don't get me started, ma. I'm curious, though. <laughs> I heard that Bank of America makes the American programmers they're firing train the Indian programmers they're hiring. Is that true? Oh, you mean Michael? Yes, I do feel bad. But every time I wanted to write him a sympathy note, one of my wives reminded me that I make $80 a month and my life expectancy is 47. <laughs> well, all this outsourcing makes people like me nervous. What's stopping you from selling all this sensitive financial information to some hacker? Because it would make my boss look bad, Mr. Quinn. And my boss is a Sikh. He wears a sword to work. Do you really think I'm going to piss him off? Dude, I'm in here. Hey, what the hell is that? Is that, in is that India? Uh, damn. Where's Bindar? Who are you? I'm Bindar. Sean, actually. <laughs> hey, Colin, what's up? Sh Sean, you're not Indian. Yeah. Well, long story short, I came out here in May to set up a customer service center for Microsoft, and when I was finished, I was fired. So, when I heard B of A was looking for people, I figured, hey, I'm here, I got a mongoose, I just, I just joined a Rudyard Kipling reading club, let's give it a shot. Wow, that's pathetic. Yeah, but the cost of living is so cheap, man. I just bought a mansion in Little America for nothing. I live like a king. Little America, are there other Americans living there? Are you kidding? It's like Prague in 91. Hot chicks, CIA spies, Bangladore, so wings. <laughs> you can read about it on my blog. So what's up with the accent? Are you pretending to be Indian, always? Oh, only when I'm on the phone with Americans. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no need. Half the office here is from Seattle. So, Sean, it sounds like you and your buddies are ironically now taking the jobs away from the Indians. <laughs> what goes around comes around, right? Besides, Bank of America can't fire all its Americans, right? Or it'll have to change its name to just bank. <laughs> you know, you should do your show out here. It would cost almost nothing. No, thanks. Almost nothing is our budget right now, but... Okay, Sean, don't stay away too long. I don't want you to go Colonel Kurtz on us, right? Will do, Colin. Kuda Hafiz. <laughs> That's Hindi for goodbye. Kuda Hafiz. I guess we all better learn that one. We'll be right back. Okay, General Wesley Clark. Cl you know what I'm saying. General Wesley Clark, folks. Don't make fun of me. I stutter on the show sometimes. You want everything to be perfect? You want a nice, perfectly, uh, nice toothed, smiling, blow-dried host? Good. Because I stutter. I make mistakes. They insult me. I insult them. Sometimes somebody goes into a shame spiral on the show. Sometimes that's me. Too bad. General Wesley Clark says he has special qualifications to be president. As a comedian, what job do your special qualifications make you perfect for? Couple number one. But, no, Jim. Uh, I think doing comedy has really taught me to hate people because most of you are self-centered pigs who deserve a shotgun blast to the face. <laughs> I detest the human race and would honestly love to bury an axe in most of you. I feel this outlook makes me perfectly qualified to either be a serial killer, a postal worker, a Midwestern high school student, or a police officer in the Bronx. <laughs> Jake. Oh, well, as a stand-up comedian, I'm used to crazy alcoholic nightclub owners trying to take advantage of me in business deals. I can entertain a drunk bachelorette party or turn the rest of the crowd against them. 
a guy pulled a knife on me one time at a comedy show. He was enjoying the show. He just felt I should see the knife in the context of whatever I was talking about on stage at the time. <laughs> um, I've had sex with some female fans. Plus, uh, I know a lot of dirty jokes. And all of this, I feel, qualifies me to be either president of the United States or a movie star. <laughs> Well, as a female comic in New York City, I regularly slam hecklers from every nation. And this would make me a great general. If North Korea heckled me like this, nice titties! I'd paint nipples on two ballistic missiles, launch them, and say, here, North Korea, suck on me! All right. Did that turn you on like it did to me just now? A little bit, yeah, thank you. All right, Greg. <laughs> uh. <laughs> my abilities to work for almost no pay and to keep talking even when my entire audience is drunk, stoned and ignoring me because they're <laughs> yelling and jamming their tongues down each other's throats <laughs> make me perfectly qualified to teach fifth grade in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh. Well, folks, I guess that's it. So uh, we will uh, see you next time on The Lovely Happy Show. Yeah, that was